championship in any sport ever won by the school. Tim Ryan and Ann Myers will have the call, but first let's go downstairs to Wendy Craver for the starting lineups. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Omni Coliseum in Atlanta, Georgia, for today's national championship game of the 1993 NCAA Women's Final Four. Please welcome the Texas Tech Lady Raiders. For Texas Tech, a 5'10 senior from Spearman, Texas, number 21, Krista Kirkland. At forward for Ohio State, a 5'11 freshman from Logan, Ohio, number 30, Katie Smith. At forward for Texas Tech, a 6'0 senior from Brownfield, Texas, number 22, Cheryl Smoot. Number 50, Nikki Keaton. At center for Texas Tech, a 6'2 senior from Freedom, Wyoming. Number 34, Cynthia Klinger. At center for Ohio State, a 6'2 junior from Oregon. Texas Tech, a 5'9 junior from Plano, Texas, number 20, Stephanie Scott. At guard for Ohio State, a 5'5 senior from Bellwood, Illinois, number 15, Andre Verse. At guard for Texas Tech, a 5'7 sophomore from Nazareth, Texas, number 23, Noel Johnson. For the Lady Raiders, Marsha Sharp. And for the Buckeyes, Nancy Josh. Well, Ann Myers, this championship match brings together two teams with two brilliant All-Americans for Ohio State, the freshman Katie Smith, just beginning her college career, and a, a young lady who was just finishing hers, having had a brilliant, brilliant career at Texas Tech in Cheryl Swoops. I tell you, Timmy, in my opinion, Cheryl Swoops is one of the best and one of the most exciting players I've ever seen play the game. She does it all. She can dribble, she can rebound, she plays defense, she can score from the inside and outside, and they are going to have a tough time stopping her. She's going to have a big game. Katie Smith, on the other hand, has already proven what she can do, especially in clutch situations like she did yesterday against Iowa to send it into overtime. Well, now, I guess the feeling is they've got to stop swoops if Ohio State has a chance to win, but they have some other talent as well. Well, both coaches felt that both players have to be contained. You know you're not going to stop either one of them. Today's officials are Sally Bell and Dee Kentner. Sally Bell from Gainesville, Georgia. Dee Kentner from Charlotte, North Carolina. Ohio State will be in white. They will defend to our right. The Lady Raiders of Texas Tech in black. Yesterday, defeating Vanderbilt, the top-ranked team in the country, 60-46, to to make it to the championship game. And the Buckeyes outlasting Iowa in overtime, 73 to 72. And the Lady Raiders open the scoring. Cynthia Klinger, number 34, a senior from Freedom, Wyoming, and the only non-Texan in the starting five. Keaton underneath for the Buckeyes. Her shot is short. Both teams like to run. It will be a very up-tempo game. 
Ohio State will play a zone and a man-to-man. -man. They'll switch things up against the zone for Texas Tech. Noel Johnson in the backcourt. Stephanie Scott. This is Kirkland on the wing. Kirkland with 14 points and seven rebounds yesterday, supporting the 31-point day by Cheryl Swoops. Turnover by the Raiders. And Roberts missed the easy layup. Klinger rebound for the Lady Raiders. Coming into this game, Ohio State felt that they might have the height advantage because they don't play too many teams that are of equal height or less, like a Texas Tech. Noel Johnson for three. Off the hands of the Lady Raiders, Kirkland, and it'll be Ohio State ball. Marsha Sharp, coach of the Texas Tech Lady Raiders, as we are just underway in Atlanta, and this game starting out a little bit like both semifinals did yesterday. The teams perhaps, perhaps with some Final Four jitters, not hitting the early shots. Percy trying to get up over Swoops, can't do it. And the first foul will go to Cheryl Swoops. Good persistence by Audrey Bercy. She got caught underneath, did not take a good shot, and then was able to get the ball back into her hands to put it back up. Cheryl Swoops did not have any fouls against Vanderbilt, and here she picks up her first. Cheryl Swoops with 36 points against Colorado to lead her team into the Final Four. 31 against Vanderbilt, 11 boards yesterday. During the season, had 53 points against Texas. Audrey Bercy, on the other hand, a real leader for the Buckeyes yesterday, 13 points and nine rebounds, five assists in her own personal battle against Lori Aaron of Iowa that was a dandy to watch. Ohio State coming out in a press. They're a very aggressive team defensively. Texas Tech did not see any presses in the tournament. Noel Johnson, Kirkland, and in the corner, swoops. One of the reasons Nancy Darsh is going to put that pressure on in the front court is because Tech is a team that takes care of the basketball, and she's trying to create some turnovers. Basket will not count, but Roberts fouls Klinger. You see the outside shot, but watch Klinger come out of nowhere. Nobody blocks her out. Smith is not able to get there, and you see Roberts kind of reaching in, picking up her first foul. 2-1, Texas Tech lead, and a three-point basket by Kirkland. Krista Kirkland, the senior from Spearman, Texas. What a good out-of-bounds play. The defense had shifted and left Kirkland wide open in the corner. And Roberts hits for three. Averill Roberts, the senior from Boston at 5-9. And she breaks up the pass, Buckeye steal. Tech only averages 15 turnovers a game. And Swoops gets it right back for the Raiders. And she hits. 7-4, Texas Tech. And that sound you hear is ooh for Swoops. And there you saw the senior against the freshman on a break situation. Percy shot misses. Roberts rebounding. Brought down by Klinger. Raiders breaking fast. Kirkland's three is off. Keaton rebounds for the Buckeyes. Both these teams like to run. They'll keep it going fast. Well, the jitters seem to be gone. Even though we've had a couple of early turnovers, it's been mainly good defensive play. When you can get into a running game, Tim, it also helps the jitters go because you're not able to think about what's going on out there. Lady Smith wanted a foul, didn't get it. Roberts missing off the front iron. Keaton trying to save, can't do it, she's out of bounds. Good shift by the zone. Klinger coming down, Smith complaining. You can see her yelling at the official. And Katie Smith has a tendency to do that a lot to the officials, talking to them, trying to get a call to go her way. Kirkland. Smith meets her there, and she'll Avoid the foul. I thought you might get a foul call, but it's a travel against Kirkland. Nice, right, a good call by the officials. A nice move by Kirkland to split the defense. She had lost Smith for a while, and then Smith was able to recover. 
Audrey Bercy, 13 points against Iowa yesterday, off knee surgery a year ago, and a real team leader for the Buckeyes, the freshman Smith, jump shot for her. Keaton and Klinger get a jump ball on the rebound attempt. Possession arrow is Ohio State. I was able to talk to the coaches before the game, and Nancy Darsh was saying offensively against that 2-3 zone that they were going to try and sneak in behind, maybe get a pass over the zone, but it also enabled them to get some offensive rebounds. Katie Smith driving, and she is fouled by Stephanie Scott, number 20. Scott, a 5'9 junior from Plano, Texas. She's a defensive specialist, yes, for this Texas Tech team. Lady Raiders only committed six fouls against Vanderbilt in the semifinal win yesterday. Long range miss, a steal by Roberts from Cheryl Swoops. Averill Roberts, five points for her. Roberts, she leads his team in, in uh, steals along with Bercy. Those are the two that had steals yesterday. And Roberts with 16 points against Iowa. The biggest thing offensively, Tim, for Texas Tech is to try and pick up what Ohio State is doing defensively. We're going to call a block on Roberts because they switch from the 2-3 zone to the man-to-man. -man. Here we see Swoops trying to bring it down. She crosses over. Good quick hands by Roberts reaching in and Swoops kind of looking at the official wanting a foul. We have a timeout. 15-28 to go. A one-point game. The 1993 NCAA Women's Basketball Final Game is sponsored by Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. Hanes, Herway, Activewear, Bras, Patties, and Socks. Just wait till we get our Hanes on you. And by Roundup, Grass and Weed Killer. One shot, that's all it takes. Roundup. Back live from the Omni in Atlanta, 7-6 Texas Tech leading Ohio State. Johnson misses the jumper for the Lady Raiders. Rebounded by Katie Smith. Percy feeding Roberts on the baseline, missed everything. An air ball grabbed by Cheryl Swoops. Nice play, but no result. Kirkland. Kirkland into the paint. That ball drop. Keaton rebounding for the Buckeyes. The running game continues as expected. Both teams getting off quick shots in these last three possessions. <laughs> Nikki Keaton, the senior from Lansing, Michigan, had 14 points and 13 rebounds yesterday. It's her first basket today. Keaton is really tough to guard because a six-foot senior, she's a forward, but she can hit that three-point shot. She's going to get called for the foul on holding Cheryl Swoops trying to cut across, but a lot of times Keaton will step out and hit that outside shot. Here you see Swoops being guarded by Nikki Keaton. Keaton trying to get through that screen of clingers and a lot of body contact. Keaton averages nearly 15 points a game and shoots 57% from the field. She was a key player yesterday in the victory over Iowa. And she was so excited she got her picture on the front of the newspaper with that bow in her hair. <laughs> right. Yeah, we voted her bow of the tournament. That's like right. That. And uh, Nancy Darsh was saying, yeah, you guys called her Pebbles, but we think of her as Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Scott firing all the way to Kirkland, lets the three go, won't drop, Keaton is there to rebound. Breaking is Roberts, off to Bercy. And Bercy blocked by Klinger. Cynthia Klinger doesn't get a lot of credit on this team. Good penetration by Bercy, and you see Roberts trying to set a pick, but Klinger is right there, the 6'2 senior from Freedom, Wyoming. Katie Smith. felt her team had to look for the three-point shot, try and get it inside against this 2-3 zone. Marcia Sharp felt defensively for her team that they've got to stop the three-point shot of Smith, Bercy, and Roberts on the outside, but also have to be able to double down against the post players. So it's going to take a lot of movement by the perimeter defense. Roberts converting Bercy's miss and his foul. Seven points for Roberts. 
and Swoops is going to pick up her second personal foul. You see Roberts getting in on the boards. Good pump fake right there and a little touch foul by Cheryl Swoops. Swoops is really going to have to be conscious and see whether this takes her out of the game or she's just going to go full board. Roberts makes it a three-point play and a four-point lead for the Buckeyes. Eight points for Roberts. Neither team was able to scout each other very much, and so in not knowing each other, I think this press by Ohio State has surprised Texas Tech a little bit. Stephanie Scott throws up an air ball. She had lots of room but rushed it. Buckeyes back the other way and a bad pass for Roberts and from Bercy. Marcia Sharp feeling that we're seeing Nancy Darsh on that pass there, but Narsha Sharp felt that her team had to take good shots and think about the shots that they're taking. They're rushing their three-point shots a little bit against the zone. Now Ohio State is back into the man-to-man, -man, so they're really mixing things up against Texas Tech. Swoops for three. Now there's a relaxed, easy shot. He's a relaxed, easy player. <laughs> And that makes her the all-time tournament scorer, 135 points in this tournament. Breaking Bridget Gordon's record from Tennessee. Good double down right there. Howard had no room to shoot, kicks it out. This is Roberts for two points. Roberts already with 10 points. 13-10 Buckeye lead. Swoops drives the baseline unimpeded. Seven points, and her mother Louise up on her feet, applauding that effort. Flying all the way out from Brownfield, Texas. First time on the airplane, coming to see her daughter play on the road like this. Katie Smith into the paint. First two points for Katie Smith. 15-12 Buckeyes. Krista Kirkland setting it up. Swoop steep in the corner. The one thing offensively, Tim, Texas Tech has to keep moving. They have to figure out whether it's a zone or a man-to-man. -man. They have to set some picks. And these outside shots, here's a big bucket by Cheryl Swoops. But I guess when you got somebody like Swoops, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just get it in her hands every chance you get. Nine points for Swoops. You can score inside, outside, rebound, run, do it all. Travel call against Stacy Howard, the junior center. And a timeout with a one-point Buckeye lead. Superstar Swoops. Her numbers during the tournament, 36 against Colorado, the high, averaging 33, and with her points so far today, she has now become the all-time tournament scorer in women's basketball history. And she's amazing. And the game before that for the Southwest Conference post-tournament play against Texas, 53 points. But it's a one-point Ohio State lead. Ohio State shot only 43% against Iowa yesterday, well below their average. And in fact, Texas Tech did not shoot as well as they do. They were only 42% in the win over Vanderbilt. And they usually shoot 52%. That's number one in the nation. Kirkland lets fly and hits for three. Raiders in front, six points for Kirkland. Turnover by Ohio State. The defense, I think, has really affected Texas Tech, although you'd never know it. But I think bringing the ball up, Noelle Johnson had a little bit of a trouble with Audrey Bercy because she's so aggressive. Negri in the game for Ohio State. First substitution of the game. This is Scott. Scott, Kirkland, Johnson, Klinger, and Swoops. Starting five and another three for Swoops. 12 points. 20 to 15, Raiders lead so difficult to guard too, Tim, is the fact that she can hit that three-point shot, and then if you come up tight and play that close defense, boom, she goes right by you with that first step. Steal by Swoops. He's got the easy break. And boom, she steps right in that passing lane and takes it. 
22 to 15. Zero run for the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech from Lubbock, Texas. Keaton misses. Swoop's got a hand on it, but a good follow by Negri. Lisa Negri, the freshman from Flint, Michigan, into the lineup for center Stacy Howard. Mercy bothering Noel Johnson. Johnson retains it. Texas Tech has done a good job as far as setting their picks. They're constantly moving, trying to get somebody open against this man to man. Travel call against Johnson. He's talking about the quickness and the first step on offense, and there it is on defense. She kind of hangs back and hangs back, and because of her quickness, she's able to step into that passing lane so quickly that the defense doesn't know where she comes from. Five-point Texas Tech lead. You see that? You see the Lady Raiders bench just standing up, asking for a walk with Averill Roberts. Roberts has a tendency, when she gets the ball, she steps into her shot without a dribble. And a lot of times it looks like a travel. That time, it, that one did look like a travel without putting the ball on the hop. Here we'll see it on the left of your screen. She gets it, boom, boom. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll walk to the basket. And you can see the bench on the side asking for a traveling call. Keaton, meanwhile, fouled by Klinger after she caught the pass from Roberts. And Nikki Keaton hits from the free throw line. 14 points and 13 rebounds yesterday against Iowa. Keaton led her team in rebounding the last few years and again this year. Buckeyes continue to press 22 to 19. Texas Tech. It's not a real aggressive press. It's just to put some pressure on the people bringing the ball up the floor. Johnson missing. Rebound by Percy. And Percy can fly. Won't go for it. Kirkland comes up with it. Four on two. Swift pulls up over Smith. Take that, freshman. <laughs> 24 to 19, 16 points for Swoops. We still have 8.15 to go in the half. Katie Smith draws the foul by Klinger. Swoops is seven for seven from the field. And have not been easy shots. They're not all layups, that's for sure. But here's a good break situation right here. And Swoops, a little pump fake right there. And pulls up for the jumper. And Smith and Negri are all over. She puts it down. Smooth swoops. 16 points, a rebound, and two steals, and we're barely into the game. Smith at the line for Ohio State. One for two from the floor, missing that free throw try. Katie Smith is an 82% free throw shooter, and she was very upset yesterday in the Iowa game. She missed the front end of the one and one that really gave Iowa another opportunity to win that game, and she was very upset after the game because also in the Virginia game, she missed three front ends of the one and one. So she has struggled a little bit from the free throw line in this tournament. Swoops, by the way, just two points away from tying the record of 18 points in the half of a championship game held by three other players. <laughs> I, th I think she's gonna break it. <laughs> I think so too, we've got 808 still to go. Raider ball, and now a little more stringent press here by the Buckeyes. Kirkland breaks it. Swoops, and her first miss. And foul called on number 24, Janice Paris, into the game for the Lady Raiders. Picks up her first foul, a junior from Lubbock, Texas. Home of the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech. Timeout at 7.53 to go, first half, Texas Tech by four. A basketball championship on CBS. Welcome back to the Omni Arena, everyone. We've been watching uh, Cheryl Swoops play a great game. Her mom, Louise, it's the first time she's ever been out of the great state of Texas. She flew for the first time, and uh, actually it was a pretty nerve-wracking experience for her. And even today, she's got a little motion sickness watching her kid go up and down the court. I spoke to her earlier, she said she liked to talk, but Frankly, the great play of her daughter is just making her a little bit too nervous to speak right now. 
<laughs> yeah, that must be uh, must include the fact that that Cheryl's got two fouls today when she didn't have at this point in yesterday's game. But she's having a great start. 14 from the field, seven of eight she's made. And a 24-20 Texas Tech lead. Ohio State has put Katie Smith down in the post position. Mercy an air ball from three-point territory. Katie Smith with just three points and one rebound. Of course, it's not a scoring contest between those two. They're completely different kind of players, and Smith, no doubt, will play a very important role as the game goes on. Smith is very capable of scoring. She needs to have the game come to her. She didn't get her first two points until over 11 with 11 minutes. Katie Smith is asking for, hey, 30-second clock, we threw it up, but the ball has to touch the Did ring, not, touch the not ring. the backboard. It hit the backboard. She missed the ring. And it doesn't count. Sometimes players and coaches don't always know the rules. <laughs> that may be. <laughs> or announcers. Or, or, or they hope that uh, that maybe it did graze the ring or that the officials thought it did. Here's a replay, and it goes right over the rim and off the backboard. Backboard isn't good enough. And so the 30-second clock expires, and the ball belongs to the Lady Raiders. Officials Sally Bell and Dee Kentner were correct. And they caught it. 7.17 to go, first half. Raiders by four. You can see defensively, Ohio State Negri really not quick enough to stay with Swoops. Swoops for another three, 19 for her. She now is the record holder for points and a half in a championship game. Cheryl Swoops hoping to pursue a professional career. She'll have to go to Europe to do that. That is her intention, and then ultimately to coach. And Jim Foster, the Vanderbilt coach, felt that we want to hold her from not scoring 40 or 50 points, but I don't know if that is going to hold true in this game, whether Ohio State can stop her. Ball is stolen away from Lisa Negri. Turnover Buckeyes. Kirkland lost it right back to Bercy with her quick hand. Audrey Bercy for Katie Smith. Beautiful play. Good unselfish play by the point guard, Audrey Bercy. Bercy, 13 points, nine boards yesterday against Iowa. Wonderful duel with Lori Aaron of Iowa in that game. Kirkland is short with a three, and the rebound is Roberts. Even though the shot was missed, you can see how Swoops gets doubled and triple team out on the perimeter, which leaves her teammates open. Kirkland a near steal, but it's controlled by Roberts for the Buckeyes. Smith will try again from the paint. That won't drop, and look at her barrel in after her rebound. And she'll pick up her first personal, but you can see Smith a little frustrated, I think, in trying to create something because the, the offense has really not come to her. Katie Smith from Logan, Ohio, where they actually built a new gym to accommodate the fans who were coming to watch her play when she was a high school star there. She's the daughter of a dentist and indeed is a free dental student herself at Ohio State. Accomplished in other sports, state discus and shot put champion. Two more years ahead at Ohio State. Michael Atkins. And Scott with the follow. It's her first point. Atkins into the lineup, giving a rest to Cynthia Klinger in the center position for the Lady Raiders. Well, it's 2-3 zone, and it is a 2-3 zone, even though you see Kirkland going to the top. There's a big shot by Smith trying to get things going. Smith for three. That 2-3 zone, it'll look like a 1-1-3, but actually the guards up top just rotate. Texas Tech shooting at 57%, and they average 52% over the season. Number one of the nation. Driving his swoops, pulls up and hits. 21 for swoops, 31 to 25, six-point lead for Texas Tech. Aaron Ingerson in the lineup for the Buckeyes, number 25. A sophomore from Hoffman State, Illinois. She has the ball now. Bercy driving, and she is fouled by Kirkland. First on the senior, Krista Kirkland. 
what you see on the defense. Negri trying to get over to Swoops and just really too slow a foot with that first step that Swoops has. She drives the baseline, pulls up for a little five-foot jumper. Texas Tech in the penalty. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation for Roberts. Make it uh, Bercy at the line, pardon me. Audrey Bercy at the line for the Buckeyes. And a plus for Ohio State really to go to the free throw line. As a team, they shoot 73%. And they're pretty deadly at the free throw line. Nancy Dar sends back in all the starters now. Howard has returned. Bercy, Roberts, Keaton, and Katie Smith with 4.17 to go first half. Bercy was 12 of 17 against UCLA earlier this year. 31-27, a four-point lead for the Lady Raiders. There's the zone by Ohio State. Quick hands by Roberts. Texas Tech uncharacteristically throwing the ball away against this quick perimeter guard situation for Ohio State. That's a lot of syllables for I an up-tempo game, man. And for, for me, too. <laughs> Where'd that one come from? Swoops, holds up and hits. She just makes the game look too easy. 23 points for Cheryl Swoops. That's just it. She is so much above everybody, Tim. They, like you said, it's so easy for her, and nobody can stay with her. Katie Smith driving. Howard rebounding, and... Smith complaining about not getting called a foul for her. Foul is on Ferris, Janice Ferris, the junior from Lubbock, her second. Well, the thing is with Katie Smith, all you have to do is step in front of her and take a charge because she's just like a bull in a china store. And she's upset about now a foul being called, and they're calling a foul on Ferris even though she has the ball. Still wondering that was, about that. That was one, interesting, yeah. <laughs> I hesitated at the time because it didn't look like that would uh, be the way the foul would go. Howard hits the first. 33 28. And makes the second as well. Stacy Howard, the junior from Flint. Timeout with 3.28 to go. First half, Texas Tech 33, Ohio State 29. And defense against Texas Tech. This is one of the reasons you might get lost on defense. Stephanie Scott, Krista Kirkland, Cheryl Swoops, and Noel Johnson all with the 20s, and you don't know who to pick up. Well, they haven't been able to find Cheryl Swoops too well so far. She's 10 of 11 in this first half with 3.20 to go. But that is an interesting point. When it's up-tempo and all those numbers are the same, you've got a bunch of ponytails out there, too. When they were shooting that shot, Cynthia Klinger was saying, can't you just put some tape on my jersey and make it a two? <laughs> this is Kirkland over to Stephanie Scott. Barris still in the lineup for the Lady Raiders, and Kirkland hits. That's for two just inside the three-point line. 35, 29, eight points for Kirkland. Bingo! I tell you, this Texas Tech team does not panic when the shot clock is going down. They always hit it in the clutch time. They're shooting at 58% of this first half. Oh, Texas Tech bench is really happy about that travel call. Roberts charged with the travel. Here's a little fake right there against Roberts to get her off balance. Good pull up by Kirkland and swoops and said, well, you know, Krista didn't play too well against Vanderbilt. Maybe she needs to play a little better today. Yeah, they sat together at the press conference, but she said that, <laughs> they too. They were each other. They get along great. In fact, they feel they have a real natural feel for each other on the floor that creates some wonderful passing. And Kirkland, good fake, this time off the mark. But it's a good shot, good ball movement by the Lady Raiders right now. They're just little pump fakes as far as making the defense go somewhere else and opens them wide up. Only the second miss by Swoops. This is Adrian Johnson, number 31, in for Ohio State now. Freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. Well, Stacy Howard and Micah Atkins kind of both falling down. They're going to call the foul on Stacy Howard. On Howard. But give credit to Marsha Sharp's team as far as getting back on defense. They're leaving that point wide open, and Kirkland's going to knock it down. Krista Kirkland now with 11 points. 
Well, Texas Tech was concerned about stopping the three-point shot of Ohio State. They've hit a couple, but Ohio State defensively has got to get off their tail and put some pressure on that three-point shot of Krista Kirkland. Biggest lead of the game, 38 to 29, and Keaton is fouled inside. First on Micah Atkins. Here you see the points. Roberts and Bercy really spreading out. Kirkland wide open all by herself. Somebody at the top has to come out and pick her up. Leave the wing, the opposite wing open. Two shots. Nikki Keaton at the free throw line. 135 left first half. She has four points. Make it five. An 80% free throw shooter. points for Keaton. Seven point Texas Tech lead. Lady Raiders have yet to shoot a free throw in this first half. Well, they really haven't gotten the ball inside to create any fouls against the man-to-man -man defense or this zone. In for Ferris and she couldn't handle it on the feed from Kirkland. Buckeye ball. Janice Ferris, a junior from Lubbock. Getting some time today. She did not play against Andy yesterday. In fact, all of the starters went the distance except for Klinger. Micah Atkins coming in to replace her some against Vanderbilt. One of the few passes you see by Audrey Bercy going out of bounds. Nine turnovers for Ohio State. Well, Johnson returns now. Ferris goes out for the Lady Raiders. Well, it was the type of game, too, for the Lady Raiders against Vanderbilt where they did not need to use a lot of substitutions. For them, they were not in a highly up-tempo game. Look at that first move by Scoops. She is so quick. She missed the shot. She's missed only three from the floor. Then you think, okay, as a defensive player, do I just sag off her? But then she'll hit that outside shot. Smith ran into traffic, and down she goes. Raiders come away with the ball. Good feed. And Ferris misses. Big rebound by Atkins. She had two points yesterday. Played 15 minutes for Klinger. There's a travel call. Ten turnovers now. 40 to 31. 23.9 seconds left first half. And it's Scott who went to the bench for the Lady Raiders. Farris remaining in for Texas Tech. And you can see Texas Tech shooting a tour at 56% in this first half. And the Buckeyes at only 32. Swoops has been the star so far. And no surprise. Missing that time everything. Great hustle by Ferris. But what happens, even though that ball goes out of bounds, it gives them an opportunity to get down on defense so Ohio State cannot kick it out on that defensive rebound and get a good shot. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Texas Tech 40, Ohio State 31 in this championship game. Andrea Joyce will be along with at the half and Stanford coach Carl Vanderveer after this word and a message from your local station. championship game and it's Texas Tech leading Ohio State 40 to 31. Hello again everyone I'm Andrea Joyce welcome to at the half and joining us upstairs once again Stanford coach Tara Vandeveer whose team won this championship game in 1990 and in 1992. There's not much that we haven't said about Cheryl Swoops already in this first half she has two scoring records both broke both records let's take a look at some of her highlights from the first half. Andrew, she really put on a, a show in the first half. She's an outside threat here with her three-point shot. She can put the ball on the floor. She did a great job, uh, really a scoring machine. And uh, we won the championship, but we didn't have to guard her. Now, she set a record for the total number of points scored in the tournament so far and also broke another record, the number of points scored in a, one half of a championship game. Overlooked, though, sometimes, because the spotlight is on Cheryl Swoops, is the Texas Tech defense. Well, I think their defense creates some things. Uh, Cheryl, right here, their defense spreads out, and Cheryl's able to get a steal. Their defense is uh, so spaced, and no one from Ohio State is behind the zone. So Cheryl's able to get in a passing lane and 
bring it down. She handles the ball very well, scores inside and outside, and that's a great play for them. Katie Smith has eight points in the first half for Ohio State. She only had 11 points yesterday. Does she need to score a lot for Ohio State to win? Well, I think Katie's pressing a little bit. Um, she does a good job of getting the free throw line. She's an excellent outside shooter. Right here, she puts down a three. She's gotten to the free throw line a couple of times, but she's really forced some things and has struggled a little bit early. And you said earlier that Ohio State has to do that because of the zone defense from Texas Tech. They have to move it outside. Right, well, I think Ohio State's hurting themselves a little bit with the turnovers. They've turned it over a little bit too much. And they haven't really gotten any offensive rhythm. They haven't reversed the ball, gotten it inside. I think a key for Ohio State would be get behind the zone, get some uh, quick passes in, and then it can come back out to Katie Smith or to uh, Roberts or even Bursey. Katie Smith, of course, is a freshman, and we saw her out there jawing with the officials just a little bit. Yeah. Is that a wise move for a freshman? It didn't seem to get her very far. Well, you know, I don't think it's really a wise move by freshman or senior. The officials are there to do their job, and they don't... You know, they don't really respond very well to freshmen telling them what to do. All right, Tara, we will see what happens in the second half. And when we come back, we will send it to New Orleans, where Pat O'Brien will bring us together the opposing coaches for tomorrow's championship game in New Orleans. We'll be back. CBS Sports coverage of the 1993 NCAA Women's Basketball Final Game is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Legs, patty holes, nothing beats a great pair of legs. And by the people of Nike, who encourage you to just do it. At halftime in this championship game, the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech 40, Ohio State's Buckeyes 31. Mary Carrillo is near the Ohio State locker room. Mary? Tim, at the half, I, I spoke with Ohio State assistant coach Melissa McFerrin. I asked her if she was pleased with the way the Buckeyes were trying to defend against and contain Cheryl Swoops. She looked bemused, to say the least. She said that they wanted very much, right from the beginning, to make sure Cheryl really have to work hard for her shots, and they just weren't able to do it. She feels that Swoops has got so much confidence now, it's going to be hard to defend against that. She said, we were in a state of constant recovery. We can't have that in the second half. She said they're going to try to trap the ball better and get better set. But, you know, we saw that uh, Swoops' mom wasn't feeling too good. I think there are a bunch of people from Ohio State who are, may are feeling pretty rotten in their stomachs because of Cheryl as well. Back to you. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's a fair assessment. And uh, 23 points for Cheryl Swoops. And just chatting with Rick Barry, the great former NBA star, is here watching this. He's a great women's basketball fan. And uh, he said he was a little surprised that, that Ohio State was trying to run with him. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I didn't think Ohio State ran at all. And I thought when Ohio State did run it in off the defense, they did a good job as far as going at it. I think that the one thing that's hurt Ohio State is Avril Roberts, those two fouls. She was guarding Cheryl Swoops, and Swoops did not score right away. I think Roberts really has to get into this game, and she needs to score the points for Ohio State. Roberts with 10, and Katie Smith with 8 to lead Ohio State in that first half. Kirkland with the ball. She has 11 points at this point. And in fact, she and Swoops have 34 of the 40 Texas Tech points. And there, Roberts playing good defense, causing the turnover. It would be interesting. Audrey Bercy is guarding Cheryl Swoops starting out in the second half. There's a big height advantage at 5'6 and 6 foot. Both teams with their original five starting. This is Bercy. Bercy off the iron, and rebound comes to Katie Smith. Her turnaround off the glass. Missed it badly, trying to force it again. And Bercy now 0 of 8 from the floor. Bercy has big games, has had big games the last three times she has played, and she is struggling from the floor in this game. 13 points against Iowa yesterday, along with nine rebounds. There's a switch-up double team right there, a little slap, and there's a big foul on Avril Roberts, her third personal. Now well, that's a key foul. This is a very, very important player for the Buckeyes' chances. Abel Roberts, a senior, brings a lot of hustle and leadership out there. And 16 points yesterday against Iowa. She drops down to help out on defense and gets caught with a slap right there. But that, she is, like you said, Tim, the key because she was started out fast. She scored 10 points in that first half and had to sit most of the first half. Stephanie Scott to Klinger. And Klinger with some room connects. A game, there was a stretch where she only did not score at all in three games against Texas, Washington, and USC. But she does so many other things out there on the floor for these Lady Raiders. There she walked again. April Roberts has that little step, and a lot of it she has gotten away with it most seasons. 
Katie Smith from the baseline. 42-33, Lady Raiders lead. Scott Johnson swoops Klinger and Kirkland for Texas Tech. A little push Hoops off. Gets a little room. No problem. Kind of pushed Bercy away from there. Yeah. Said, you little gnat, get away from me. 44 to 33. Fifth goes a distance. That'll count. And she is fouled. So the freshman. Katie Smith from Logan, Ohio. Starting off hot here in the second half. Good dish right there. Contact by Klinger. Her third personal. Lisa Sebastian into the game for Ohio State, a 5-5 senior from Avon Lake, Ohio. John Bercy in the backcourt with Smith, Howard, the center, number 43. And Keaton. Well, Ohio State looks like they've come out in the second half and attacking a little bit more, being a little bit more aggressive. That's Klinger in and out. And it's foul trying to keep her rebound alive. Two quick fouls on Cynthia Klinger. She had two in that first half. She knows she's got to come out of this game. And Micah Atkins coming into the game, the freshman at six foot from Lorraine, Texas. And this is the biggest crowd she's ever played in front of. Her high school packed the gym at 150 people. <laughs> 16,000 here in the Omni today. It's been a sellout through the final four. Scalpers in action. And they have been treated to a real good championship game and the brilliance of Cheryl Swoop so far this afternoon. And it's a long way to go. It's 17.42 still to play the steal by Kirkland. And she's back by Sebastian. The basket will count or no? No, it will not. And it might be offensive. No, I think they'll, they'll call it on Sebastian. They're just not counting the basket. Krista Kirkland, great concentration to put it in. Sebastian picks up her first. Kirkland, good heads up play. A bad pass by Audrey Bercy. Ohio State just not moving the ball real well. And you can see Sebastian just grab her, and Kirkland was very happy with making it. Bercy, again, the height advantage against Swoops. Bercy picking up her first foul. And Texas Tech looking to get the ball to Cheryl Swoops with that mismatch. And one of the reasons they have that Nancy Darsh has put Audrey Bercy on swoops I would think in the second half is because of the quickness factor obviously Avril Roberts with her foul situation cannot guard swoops so the quickness of Bercy trying to stay with swoops minor delay here some debris is on the floor and pointed out from the official scorer and has been removed Raiders inbounding Scott for Kirkland. And Swoops really looking to post up against Bercy to try and clear things out for her. Man to man by Ohio State. Good back door, but the ball goes to Atkins. She misses the easy layup. Great chance for Atkins. The ball landed right in her lap. 44 to 36. The score remains Texas Tech. Sebastian beating Katie Smith. Sebastian and Burke. Percy, the backcourt now for the Buckeyes. Percy going all the way. Well, give credit to Audrey Bercy as far as penetrating to the basket. She wanted to get a foul, but here she is on defense, and on the back door, she gets her hand in there to slap it away and then distracts Atkins on missing that shot. And Bercy picks up her second foul against Micah Atkins. Lisa Negri comes in for Stacy Howard for Ohio State. Negri turned in 29, 29 minutes yesterday against Iowa, contributed nine points. Saw some action here in the first half as well. What a pretty play right there. Just a little give and go. Swoops looks like she's going to set the screen and book. There you talked about the connection of Kirkland and Swoops with the eye contact, and she was gone. 27 for Swoops. The two seniors playing their final collegiate game, and they'll miss each other. Kirkland in swoops. Bercy for three. 46 to 39. Six points for Bercy. Ohio State really needs their seniors, Bercy and Keaton, to really get on track in the second half. Roberts was one that did in the first half. Nice back door right there. Good defense by Negri. Ohio State really helped out. 
and Swoops had to pull up for that shot. Sebastian, nice drop for her off the back iron, controlled by Scott. Ohio State standing around a little bit. Stephanie Scott for Kirkland. Swoops sets the screen for Kirkland. And picks up the foul. They're going to call it on Sebastian. They're calling on Cheryl Swoops. No, Sebastian. Swoops is standing there, and Sebastian is trying to get through and just kind of grab around. We have a timeout on the floor, 15.41 to go, regulation time, Tech 46 to 39. Cheryl and I just have to make contact, and we, you know, eye contact, and we know immediately what the other one's thinking and, and where she's going to go and where I need the ball to be. And also, half the passes I throw are out of this gym, and she's just such a great athlete that she can jump up and grab them. Those are two great pals. Krista Kirkland, she's got 11 points. Swoops with 27. Krista from Spearman, Texas. And Swoops from Brownfield, Texas. Two huge metropolises over there in West Texas. And uh, it's just a great relationship. They're playing their final game and trying to win a title for Texas Tech. First along ever in any major sport. Along with Cynthia Klinger. The thing that you just love, you hear the respect and the love they have in the voices for each other. Yeah, they can kid each other, as Swoops <laughs> did yesterday, saying she didn't think Lisa had much of a game, or uh, Chris had much of a game in the victory over Vanderbilt. And Cheryl said, hey, I didn't have that good a game. And Chris, and then Cheryl said, Chris, you didn't either. Right, yeah, I mean, she had 31 points. That's a real slump. And yet she really did not have one of her better games in the sense of being smooth. But boy, you hate to see what she's like when she's really off. There's Katie Smith. 46 to 41, Ohio's cut it to five. 15 for the freshman. And we've been talking a lot about this superstar swoops in her final game. Katie Smith is the next superstar in women's college basketball. Here you see Ohio State rotating the ball and Smith running the baseline. Nancy Darsh talked about running a player behind that zone and they're finally starting to do it. They didn't do it in the first half like Tara Vanderveer picked up at halftime, and also the turnovers have really hurt Ohio State. Already an All-American, Katie Smith, in her freshman year. Kirkland kicks it out for Scott. Back to Kirkland. Kirkland hits. Two points. 48-41. Sebastian, Smith, Keaton, Negri, and Bercy, the lineup for Ohio State. That's Bercy. Swoops is there to rebound, and she is fouled from behind by Bercy, and that'll be three on the senior. Audrey Bercy just has not had one of her better games. Ohio State has not gotten into the flow of their offense, really stagnant, just kind of passing around the perimeter. It has not penetrated into the seams of this zone and have not looked to get the ball inside. Once they get the ball inside, they need to have some cutters going. Roberts comes back in. She has three on her, Averill Roberts for Ohio State. Along with Elisha Bond, number 10, a sophomore from Reynoldsburg, Ohio, replacing Bercy. Who we saw in the very beginning of the game when the players were being introduced, invented those little handshakes and slaps. That's right. Swoops! Doesn't matter who Nancy Darsh puts on Cheryl Swoops, they just cannot get to her. Roberts driving baseline, good feed to Negri. Basket will count. And the foul will be against Stephanie Scott. Well, you see Swoops down low and Keaton on her going to come back, sets the pick on Smith, but she gets back up, Keaton kind of relaxes a little bit, and then takes her one-on-one. -on -one. And what they say, the rest is history. Negri at the line, three-point play for the Buckeyes, and a six-point lead for Texas Tech. Kirkland calls a signal, sending Scott in motion, looping around the baseline. Outside, Noel Johnson. You see a different team right now with Ohio State with Roberts in the game. And there's a big bucket by Johnson, her first two points of the game. Beautifully executed play by the Lady Raiders. 
that's what makes Texas Tech so tough, Tim, too. Everybody kind of keys on on Kirkland and Swoops, but then you cannot leave Noel Johnson or Stephanie Scott wide open. Johnson averages nine points a game. Bond hits her first shot. Well, Nancy Darsh trying to get some production from some other players, and Elisha Bond coming in, knocking one down. And Roberts trying to come up with a loose ball. Bond does. Great effort by Roberts. Bond goes in and won't drop for And the rebound is Swoops. Tough break for Bond. Roberts made a great play coming up with the ball. She's their defense. Trying to get things going for Ohio State. And you'll see some quickness from this Bond. She's got great feet. She can really move. She might provide a little spark for the Buckeyes. They need it. 52 to 47. 12-22 to go. Offensive foul on Noel Johnson trying to set a screen for her teammate. Just great hustle by Ohio State. Roberts really makes this happen. Trying a crossover dribble by Johnson right into Roberts. And Elisha Bond right there. And Bond gets the ball, and she's got the angle. But I think out of the corner of the eye, she sees Cheryl Swoops. Plus the fact she's just come into the game even though she knocked a three-pointer down. Bond's pass knocked out of bounds by Kirkland. Five-point margin. Ohio State has gotten back into this game with their defense, and they're starting to move the ball around on their offense a little bit more. Keaton trying to feed Smith, and it's off the hands of the Raider player. Um, the penetration for, for Ohio State is going to open up their outside game. Roberts outside for Negri. Atkins and Keaton really going at it inside. Smith battles her way in and hits. Basket counts and she'll go to the line. 17 for Katie Smith, picking it up in the second half. Almost the same move that we saw against Iowa to tie that game up into overtime. There she steps back over in the body contact with Atkins and the concentration of the clutch freshman putting the ball in the basket. Katie Smith, 11 points, five rebounds yesterday against Iowa and had to spend six minutes on the bench with two fouls. 11.54 to go, and it's a two-point game. Spring has arrived in Atlanta. The Dogwoods are out, and they'll be in Augusta, of course, next week here on CBS. This is the second largest ever championship game crowd, only behind 1990 in Knoxville. A lot of credit should go to the chairperson of the Women's Basketball Committee for the NCAA, Judith Holland. She's done a wonderful job here and has certainly uh, been a great help to all of us at CBS. We thank her and all of her committee members. Most definitely. She's been very easy to work with, very cooperative. A two-point game. Texas Tech with a lead in the ball, and Katie Smith pushing on Swoops. Second on Smith. Such a poised, relaxed player as a freshman. You can, oh, she's she so involved has, in absolutely has, everything. She, is. she has a lot of poise. The one thing, though, that I see that in this game, because Ohio State's been down and maybe her game in the first half wasn't as going as well as she would have liked to have, she has a tendency to talk to the officials and gripe a little bit too much. And, and I think in the long run, like, for, of course, you know, it depends on what coach has her and so forth, but I think that might catch up with her in the long run. And the older she gets, she'll know when to talk to an official and how to talk to an official. Swoops, meanwhile, at the line for the first time today, hits her first one. She shoots 86% from here, and so she gets two more points and opens the lead to four. Oh, and guess what? 31 points. <laughs> 31 points matching her total of yesterday with 11.28 to go here today. Biggest Tech lead was 11. They're now up by four, cut back to two by Keaton. Ohio State has not led since back in the first half at 15-14. Well, I think the key has really been Roberts and Bond coming into this game. The defense has picked things up, and they've been able to go into a man-to-man. -man. Eight points for Nikki Keaton of the Buckeyes. Scott inside for Micah Atkins. And it's rebounded by Negri. For Bond. You can see Bond's got some movement and a good feed to Keaton. Ten points for Keaton and a good feed from the sophomore Elijah Bond off the bench. 
Well, we talked about the big players, the seniors getting involved, and Nikki Keaton on this end of the pass puts it in, and a little bump by Kirkland, sending Keaton to the line, a chance to tie it up and go ahead with the free throw. take the lead for the first time since early in the first half at 15-14. They're up by one. 10.50 to go. Swoop from Kirkland in traffic. Outside for Johnson. Badgering man-to-man -man defense now by the Buckeyes. The Lady Raiders just have to take their time, set some picks, an aggressive defense. you got to look for the back door. Micah Atkins missed it, but she is fouled, and they're going to call it on Negri. Negri, and Negri uh, hurt. It looked like as Atkins came up with a shot that she caught Negri in the nose. Now she's holding her cheekbone. Well, the elbow really catches her as she goes up, right in the jaw. And that's one of the reasons it distracted Atkins from making that shot. And Negri picks up the foul and a uh, little pain in the chops there as well. Lisa Negri, a 6'2 freshman out of Flint, Michigan, has really done a tremendous job for Nancy Darsh's Ohio State team off the bench. Mike Atkins, a freshman from Lorraine, Texas, hits her first free throw. Atkins, as a bench player, who sees a fair amount of time, averages 9.6 points a game. They like to call her Mikey. And she hits two. One point lead for the Raiders. Steal by Scott. All the Raiders contributing in different ways and swoops is fouled by Keaton. Well, not much contact on the baseline, but I know Nikki Keaton was trying to cut that baseline off against Cheryl Swoops with that quick step. And a little argument about the positioning at the free throw line. <laughs> swoops for the line. 17 fouls on Ohio State, six on Texas Tech. Christian Kirkland always has that smile on her face. She'll be smiling in June when she gets married. Swoops hits the first to make it a two-point game again. Thirty-three points for Swoops. Three-point lead for the Raiders. Roberts inside for Keaton, and Keaton, what a shot. Well, Keaton is just bulldozing her way in there, using her body, getting position, and Atkins, the freshman, doesn't know how to get Keaton out of that key. Deep by Roberts, works her way back in a little bit more, and this tenacious Buckeye defense starting to have some effect. Eight seconds on the shot clock, a little too tenacious. Bond against Kirkland. Here you see the senior Nikki Keaton going down low. Look at her just back in, back in. And Atkins does not know how to get down and use her lower body to push Keaton out, so give credit to the senior in getting good position to put that ball in. Just a Kirkland to the line. Negri rebounds. One point game, Texas Tech, 9.43 remaining. Ohio State went to overtime to beat Iowa yesterday. Vaughn throws up a three and it won't drop for her. Scott dives in to control the rebound and Vaughn gets a hand on it for a jump ball. Possession arrow is Ohio State. One of the reasons that Stephanie Scott puts those knee pads on is because she's down on the floor a lot. And when she was growing up in Plano, Texas, her team was the Texas Lady Longhorns, and they all wore knee pads. Will be Raider ball again. No, Ohio State ball, pardon me. But just mentioned in Texas, Texas Tech and them is a great rivalry, kind of like Ohio State and Iowa. And Texas just dominated the Southwest Conference for so many years, and all of a sudden, Texas Tech came into it. The light. Smith. Smith 
uses her, so, her body so well to avoid the charge on that penetration. 20 points for Katie Smith. She's had a great second half. There's the zone by Ohio State. Cheryl Swoops. 36 points. Ohio State's Buckeyes unranked, overlooked before the season began. Here they are on the championship game. Two-point margin, Texas Tech on top. These teams have never played each other. Neither team has been in the championship game since these NCAAs were started for women. That's Keaton. Rebounded by Smith, and she's got it. And it is Swoops with a foul. Great aggressive play by Ohio State, staying after the offensive boards. Nikki Keaton keeping it up there. She misses this shot down low, but she gets it where she wants to. She gets it again, puts it up. And look at Smith underneath, a strong body. She's got those strong legs, puts it up. Chance for three points. We talked about her strength as far as being a discus in the state and, and shot putter in the state championships. And she was hoping to be on the track team and would love to go to the Olympics in the year 2000 when she can concentrate on it. Noel Johnson puts Tech back on top. Four points for her. Both teams are really cranking it from the field. Ohio State's struggled in the first half shooting. They've really picked it up. A steal by Scott. All the Raiders contributing. Stephanie Scott, the junior from Plano, four points for her and a big basket, a three-point lead. 7.48 remains. Katie Smith bowls away along the line, tried to feed Negri, picked off by Kirkland. That time she got trapped on the baseline and the defense just converged and the pass was not there. Ball inside to Swoops and Klinger. This is Swoops, double teamed in there. Still gets the shot off, won't go though. Good job by Smith. The distractor may have got a piece of the ball. One of the few times that Cheryl Swoops has really forced the shot. And Bond takes a timeout for Ohio State. 7.09 remaining, 65-62, Texas Tech. A.A. Basketball Championship on CBS. Welcome back, everyone. I'm in fresh row. Spare a thought, if you will, for this man, Casey Westenreader. He writes for the Texas Tech University newspaper. He's been following them all year, and surely he wants his team to win, but he placed what could be a very stupid bet. And if he loses it, the Texas Tech, Tech win, team, if they win tomorrow night, they get to shave this man's head. How do you like your chances for keeping your hair? Well, uh, my hair doesn't like it, but <laughs> I, hope, I hope I get a haircut. I need one. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> I like the Three Stooges tie, like curly up on top. That's what it's going to look like. <laughs> I'd say Casey could use a little trim. <laughs> All right, 6.55 to go. Raiders by three. He'll be wearing that tie a lot, him and curly. Johnson, Kirkland, and a steal by Bond. It got away from Krista Kirkland. Katie Smith won't go for her. And on the rebound, Negri and Klinger going for it. The push, I believe, will be on Negri. It is her second foul. The Buckeyes had the shot they wanted in the transition game. Usually, Smith can knock that shot down. It just didn't fall for her that time, and Negri trying to hit the offensive boards. Smith is 9 of 16 from the field, but she has 15 points in the second half compared to 8 in the first half. So she has been the leader for the Buckeyes here in the second half. Kirkland at the line. And she hits to widen it to four. 14 points for Kirkland. She had 14 yesterday against Vanderbilt. This is the second rebounded by Bond. Ohio State shooting at 57% this second half, and Texas Tech at 60%. Both teams above their average as Texas Tech, number one in the country, 52%, 47% for Ohio State. Roberts mows down Scott, and Smith hits for two right on the line. 
25 points for Katie Smith. And she had a career high on CBS against Virginia earlier with 35 points. Scott watched by Smith. Remember, Katie Smith, just a freshman. Cheryl swoops in her final game. Ohio, Ohio State's really done a good job as far as keeping the ball out of Cheryl Swoop's hands in this second half. Here's Keaton. No drop for her. Rebounded by Negri. Negri in all kinds of traffic. Gets it out to Keaton. Good job. Roberts off the front iron. Rebounded by Kirkland. But the Buckeyes cool down. Two-point lead for the Raiders. The Lady Raiders use the back door at all. And there it is. Speed for Kirkland. Foul on Smith. With this tight defense, you have an opportunity to go back door. That time they were able to use it. Kirkland saw swoops on the weak side after the defense picked her up. Three minutes has gone by without a basket by swoops. But she'll be at the free throw line. Elisha Bond came in and did a wonderful job filling in for Audrey Bercy. Bercy back in, number 15, the senior. Swoops at the line. First person along Smith. 37 points. For Cheryl Swoops. Try to Brownfield, Texas. Tom Louise here to watch all of this excitement of the NCAA championship game. And a pair to 38 points. And 68. 64, Texas Tech, the Lady Raider lead. Good feed inside, Bercy to Keaton. That's a great feed by Audrey Bercy. Ohio State passed the ball around the perimeter, and as the zone was shifting, saw Keaton wide open. 15 points for Keaton. <laughs> Swoops fouled. Well, that was one of those bad passes that Cheryl Swoops went up and got. You see Audrey Bercy making the zone. Look like it's going to go back out to the perimeter to Smith. And Nikki Keaton wide open, and she makes a nice penetration in deep against the defense. Keaton picks up her third personal at the other end, sending Swoops to the line again. And Swoops with 38 points. Doesn't miss from here too often. Doesn't miss too often, period. 38 points, the highest count in the 1993 tournament. And she already held that mark of 36 against Colorado. She makes two, rattling that one around a little bit. 70 to 66. <laughs> 40 points for Cheryl Swoops. Roberts for three. Averill Roberts. The senior from Boston, 13 for her. That's her first basket in the second half. He's had a little bench time with three fouls. What a Klinger. Great pass. Everybody just cleared out for Klinger. Klinger not an offensive threat because nobody's been watching her. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Because of the tight defense, Texas Tech just cleared it out, pulled everybody high. And thank you very much. No help defense at all. And Negri gets called for the foul all by herself. But a great pass by Noel Johnson inside to Cynthia Klinger. And that's what makes Texas Tech so tough. Everybody keys on and Cheryl Swoops and Christy Kirkland. And then you've got somebody else open. Klinger makes it a three-point play in the third personal. 3.58 to go. Texas Tech on top. Well, you can see that the two stars that we identified for you at the beginning of our game have indeed been the stars. 40 points for Swoops, 25 for Katie Smith. Both teams shooting hot in the second half. Wow. 73 to 69, Texas Tech on top. They've never played each other. They've never been in the championship game, either team. 
And Ohio State unranked when the season began. Ohio. Keaton forcing it up through Klinger, and Klinger picks up her fifth personal, and she is gone. Ohio State really has to keep the pressure on coming out of that timeout, I felt. And right away, they went right inside to Cynthia Klinger on defense. She fouls out with seven points, but she's a big foul out because of what she adds to this team defensively and rebounding in a big three-point play down on the other end before that timeout. But a heads-up play by Ohio State, keeping the pressure on, going inside to Nikki Keaton. And it'll mean now that they'll go from a senior to a freshman. Micah Atkins has had some time today, played effectively against Iowa, against uh, Vanderbilt yesterday. And six-footers from Lorraine, Texas. Number 55, Keaton at the line. Solid game for Nikki Keaton. 16 points for her, the senior from Lansing. She has four brothers and five sisters. Keaton Conley hits two, 73 to 71. Three, 43 to go. Johnson and Scott in the backcourt. Kirkland swoops. And Micah Atkins up front. Good pressure defense by Ohio State. Percy jumps in to knock that out of bounds. Offensively, the Lady Raiders have to set some picks, cannot keep dribbling against this pressure defense of Percy and Roberts out front. And Smith, they need to set some picks, look for the back doors. Or give it to Cheryl Swoops. <laughs> I forgot to add that one. In and out. She was open and missed it. Katie Smith rebounding. Chance to tie or go ahead with a three. Roberts for Smith. Percy in three-point range. Roberts. Nice pass in. Stolen away by Kirkland. You can see Ohio State was really looking to get the ball inside, and Nikki Keaton just was not really a high percentage pass. Cheryl Swoops has not scored in the last six minutes. She only has four field goals in this second half, four of six. So in the first half, she was had taken, made 10, and she has not been able to shoot the ball as much in the second half. But when you're hot, you're hot, and you get it to your main player. 42 points on the game for Swoops. A sharp angle shot from the baseline, a four-point lead for the Lady Raiders. This has been all a championship game could be for these women. Keaton right back for the Buckeyes. Back to two, 19 for Nikki Keaton. Ohio State continuing to go inside to Nikki Keaton, maybe making Texas take con Tech concentrate on her, and then see if they go to Smith or Roberts or Bursi. Swoops forcing that one, they got her own rebound, and now she decks Bursi trying to get loose. Bursi had already fouled her. The foul had been called on Bursi, and that's four on the senior. Well, total, Mercy. total frustration by Cheryl Swoops. I think this is a four shot. She's got four white jerseys on her. She kind of gets hit on the arm going up for the shot. And there's the foul right in there as Bercy slaps down. And then you see Swoops push her away. And Audrey Bercy saying, what? I got pushed down. But that was after she had gotten Swoops on the arm. But Swoops got hit a little bit going up for that shot. Even though she had those all those jerseys around her, she needs to continue to look for her teammates. Swoops, again, a reminder, an 86% free throw shooter. Up to 43 points on the game. She's 9 of 9 from the line. Make it 10 of 10. Stop pressing a little down court all by herself here just to bother the Buckeyes. 77 to 73 the lead. And Ohio State takes a timeout. 152 left, a four-point lead for the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech over Ohio State, a great championship game. <laughs> Texas Tech's band, I guess it's a tribute to Nikki Keaton. I wonder if Bo knows Bo's. Well, certainly, like uh, yeah, Nikki Keaton has been a key performer for Ohio State. We have 152 to go, a four-point lead for the Lady Raiders. Ohio State ball. Percy, the senior, in and out. 
Rebound by Atkins, the freshman for the Lady Raiders. Texas Tech getting the ball to Swoops. A nice pass to Atkins. You don't want to stop playing, and Texas Tech wants to continue to get their shots off. Ohio State is going to be aggressive. They're going to look for their three-point shot if it's open. We've seen Bercy bury him against Iowa, but they'll also look to go inside. They have to continue to be aggressive offensively and defensively. Plenty to go. Katie Smith, watched by Stephanie Scott, driving on her. We're going to call the body contact on Stephanie Scott. Smith taking her to the baseline. Third on Scott. Katie Smith to the line. Ohio State down by four, 112 to go. Missing the first of two. A lane violation. Fortunate for Texas Tech, where they shooting two. They said one and one over the PA. Now they're gonna check. Should have been a one-on-one. -on -one. And if that was the case, Texas Tech would have come up with the rebound. That's what you always like as a player, and I don't think officials do that enough today anymore in the men's or women's games, where they hold out their fingers on how many shots you get. Right. And they don't do that as much today. And there's a one-on-one. -on -one. Smith missing the second. Of the one and one. Well, she missed the first. I'm the sorry. One -on -one yeah, too, right. So, well, she got two shots. 104, and it remains 77 to 73. Swoop, swooping. 46 points. Well, if you're going to spread the floor for Cheryl Swoops, you better have some help down low. Smith making a freshman mistake. Trying to steal the ball from behind against Cheryl Swoops as he handles the ball too good for that. Fifty-eight point one seconds remain. Seventy-nine to seventy-three. Texas Tech. The conclusion of every NCAA tournament game will select the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Jim Ryan with Ann Myers, Mary Carello, Andrea Joyce, and Tara Vanderveer for this championship game, which has been a dandy right from the beginning. 79 to 73, the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech over the Buckeyes of Ohio State with 58.1 seconds to go. That is Cheryl Swoops. Dazzling superstar and the superstar to be, Katie Smith of Ohio State, already an All-American in her freshman year. Swoops playing her final game as a collegian and hoping to go away with a victory. Texas Tech with four timeouts, which really will be to their advantage if Ohio State can keep this close. Swoops to the line. That's what we say. This girl can play. 46 points, make it 47. 80 to 73. The Buckeyes up against it now, under a minute. Mercy Bond in the backcourt. And Smith with Kirkland jumping in to knock that out of bounds. And we mentioned earlier that Texas Tech has never won a title in the NCAA competition in any sport. What a thrill it would be here in a major one, women's basketball. Kirkland comes up with a loose ball on a diving steal by Stephanie Scott. Scott, the junior from Plano, Texas. She hasn't been a star in this game, but she's made a number of very key plays. There are more talents out there than just Cheryl Swoops on this Texas Tech team. Coached by Marsha Sharp. Kirkland goes to the line. 
She has 14 points, as she did yesterday against Vanderbilt, playing her final game, and she misses the free throw. Percy with it. 40 seconds left. Percy for three. Rebound, Smith way up for it, and missed the layup. Jump ball. Possession arrow is Texas Tech. Well, Bursey put up a good shot. Smith was right there. I thought she was going to tip it in rather than come down with it. And I think she wanted to try and draw a foul. Smith with 25 points. And a foul call immediately on Bond. 31.8 left. Third on Elijah Bond. He's done a good job. The sophomore off the bench from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Noel Johnson will go to the free throw line. She has four points and shoots 72% from the charity strike. I tell you, Texas Tech has got to be happy. It's not over with 31 seconds left because a few three-pointers but could knock it down for Ohio State. But Texas Tech has played such good defense. And give credit to the Buckeyes as far as their comeback. They came back and took the lead. They were down by as much as 11 points. And they just could not pull the rug out from underneath the Lady Raiders. Noel Johnson calmly hits two. The sophomore from Nazareth, Texas. 82 to 73. They can start celebrating in Lubbock. Atkins rebounds. Loose ball. Smith throws it up. Smith again, and she drops that one. 82 to 75. Smith, 27 points. You've got to give her credit. Hustling after the basketball. Smith will try to make it a three-point play. 20.8 seconds remains. Cheryl Swoops picking up her fourth foul, but the player of the year, what a game she's had. Timeout called by Nancy Darsh. 20.8 to go, 82 to 76. Well, the familiar names in these championship matches have been Stanford and Tennessee in recent years. Four newcomers to the Final Four this year, Texas Tech and Ohio State of the Lady Raiders prevail, winning the first ever championship for their school in Lubbock, Texas. Ohio State, if they can't pull this out, will still have had an outstanding year. They were unranked at the beginning of the year. They have a record of 28 and three right now. Nancy Darsh and her staff have done a wonderful job, and they have got an outstanding team, and credit to their seniors, Audrey Bercy, Gabriel Roberts, Nikki Keaton among the starters, Lisa Sebastian, all will be playing their final game here today. Still with a shot at 20.8 seconds, but the game appears to be in the control of the Lady Raiders from Texas Tech. Dazzling performance by Cheryl Swoops today as she heads into a new career in professional basketball, probably in Europe, and hoping to coach back in Texas someday. And at Brownfield High School, they retired her number. So she's already had it retired. Kirkland will inbound. And immediate foul. Two of the Buckeyes rushing over there to deck Noel Johnson. Couple of tenths off the clock. And Johnson will go to the line. Nancy Darsh, no stranger to the Final Four. She was an assistant under Pat Summit at Tennessee for five years. They never won it, but they were there, and she has a taste of it, a flavor of it, and comes up a runner-up again. This time as a head coach at Ohio State, but we got to listen to Tara Vanderveer at halftime, and Tara Vanderveer was coaching at Ohio State before Nancy Darsh got there. Noelle Johnson with six points makes it seven, and she hit her last two from the line. A boys sophomore from Nazareth, Texas, shoots 72% from the line. And she makes another pair, 84 to 76. Katie Smith inside Kirkland, kicks out to Bercy for three, off the glass. She called that one too, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Bang. 84 to 79, we're in. The final six seconds and another foul call. Roberts on Kirkland. It should be Roberts fifth, I believe, and you can see that Marsha Sharp is thinking victory here. 
Did you play against Marsha in <laughs> college ball somewhere? Oh, it was a while. She went to Wayland Baptist College, and I played AAU ball against them, the Flying Queens. And then my freshman year, when I was at UCLA, we went to the NWIT. Kirkland misses the free throw, Smith rebounds, and Bercy hits at the buzzer. But the victory is a two-point margin for the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech. by the Lady Raiders from Texas Tech. And you saw an embrace there just moments ago between these two. Krista Kirkland and Cheryl Swoops, two seniors, two pals, two fine basketball players. Mary Carrillo is out on the floor. Cheryl Swoops writing and rewriting history. First ever national title for Texas Tech. Does it feel like what you thought it would feel like? Oh, man, it's even better. This is really something special. And I think the fact that this is our last year and this is really something we look forward to doing and this feels really great. Congratulations. <laughs> Back to Tim. All right, Mary, the Chevrolet players of the game are easy. Cheryl swoops from Texas Tech. Katie Smith from Ohio State, the next star in women's basketball. And so for Ann Myers, Mary Carrillo, and Andrea Joyce, I'm Tim Ryan saying so long from the Omni, where the final score, Texas Tech 84, Ohio State 82. Coming up tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time, it's the prelude to a championship, followed by the national championship men's game between Michigan and North Carolina. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Championship. Congratulations to the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech, champions in women's basketball.